Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And right now on GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating a drive-by shooting on the west side. How investigators say it happened and who was hurt? Coming up, a country in crisis. How leaders and lawmakers are dealing with the global pandemic that is coronavirus. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington with the latest. And live cam giving us a look outside. A little clearer than it was yesterday, but just as mild. We'll check in with Mike. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, March 12th. Wake up this morning and there's just so much going on. Everybody. Take a deep breath. Oh, yeah. It's shocking news about the NBA suspending the rest of the season. Yeah, and a lot of developments just in the last 24 hours. Yeah, we've got them all for you, and we'll, we'll get you updated. Um, it's because, if you haven't heard, a Utah Jazz player has tested positive for coronavirus, so they have just suspended the season for now. But, uh, I mean, far-reaching ramifications. Got an alert from my son's school yesterday. They're going to let kids stay at the residence halls, not travel if they want to, and they're prepared to do online classes and basically send the kids home for the rest of the school year. Several universities are doing that, but yeah. we'll keep you posted on we will. it. Uh, here at home, it's another mild day. Yeah, and lots of humidity, warm. We're still about 15 degrees or more above normal, and we don't have the widespread fog like we had yesterday. Yeah, I noticed that. There's a couple of hints of it. There may be some of it to, trying to form up in the next couple of hours, but uh, yeah, we're just very warm. We made it up into the mid 80s yesterday. We'll make it up into the low 80s today, still above normal. Uh, good visibility out there at the airport as of right now. Uh, 67 degrees, 66 below Verde. Again, the normal low temperature is 50 right now, so we're way above that. And here's the dew point temperature. Is the measure moisture in the atmosphere. Everybody is above 60 right now, so you can feel the humidity. You notice it, and it's going to be sticking around throughout the foreseeable future. All right, we've got moderate mold, hackberry, but oak. We're starting to get into the oak season, so, you know, a lot of watery eyes, sniffles, all that. That's... That's not fun. Just on the heels of Mountain Cedar, we get that oak coming on in here. 74 today at noon, 82 for a high temperature. We will see some sunshine mixed in with the clouds again today, like yesterday. I don't know if it's going to be quite as much. And then a few more clouds tomorrow. Still not a bad day. Uh, still going to be warm and humid. Just take that. Uh, I mean, that's going to be the, the case throughout even next week. But we will start to have some rain chances moving on in here, perhaps late tomorrow and then especially by the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis, and you're already sending out some push alerts, right? Yeah, Mike, I sent out a push alert here just about 10 minutes ago, but it looks like uh, SAPD has just opened up 281 northbound at Bitters in between Central Parkway. There was a rollover accident there. This is now opened up. 281 is now open, just to let you all know, and I'll send another push alert out for that. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide here. Let's see what's going on. Um, there we go. Okay, 281 and Winding Way, that's where the accident was open. 35 and Weedner Road, very light traffic there on the roadway. 10 in Days of Allah, things are flowing smoothly. And let's do one more here. Let's see what we got. 35 and Topper Wine, looking great. Well, I hope you're having a great morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for suspects involved in a drive-by shooting. Happened just before 11 last night in the 6,000 block of Lock-In Street. That's on the west side. Police tell us a man was sitting on his porch when the suspects drove by, began firing several shots. The man was taken to a nearby hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. He is expected to recover. Police are still investigating. A woman is in serious condition this morning after she was hit by a car while crossing the street. It happened just after 11 last night in the 300 block of San Pedro, just north of downtown. According to police, the driver pulled over and did help the woman. She was taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. No word on if the driver will face any charges. Latest with the ongoing coronavirus concerns, we're still waiting for the next group of Grand Princess cruise ship passengers to arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for quarantine. About 100 arrived by plane Tuesday night. They were all reported to be asymptomatic. Going forward, only Texas residents will be kept for the full length of their quarantine here at JBSA Lackland. According to the Texas Department of State Health Services, there are 21 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Texas. Three cases in Collin County, two cases in Dallas County, six cases in Fort Bend County, seven cases in Harris County, and one case each in Gregg, Montgomery, and Tarrant counties. Again, these numbers do not include the evacuees currently in isolation at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease here in San Antonio. As of right now, eight people remain at TCID here at home.
Thousands more cases of coronavirus are sprouting and spreading across the world here in the U.S. Communities canceling events, taking unprecedented levels of precaution. Hollywood actors Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson announcing they have tested positive for COVID-19. President Donald Trump addressing the nation on travel restrictions and working with lawmakers to provide desperate medical relief and financial aid to Americans in need. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest on the emergency efforts out of Washington, D.C. A country in crisis. I have decided to take several strong but necessary actions to protect the health and well-being of all Americans. Here in the U.S. and around the world, coronavirus now a global pandemic, the first in a decade, according to the World Health Organization. The death toll at home and abroad rising. Plus President Trump addressing the nation, instituting more sweeping travel restrictions. Flights from Europe to the United States banned for the next 30 days with few exceptions. Anything coming from Europe to the United States is what we are discussing. As more Americans in desperate need of COVID-19 testing and supplies, Trump announcing insurance companies will waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments. The White House also promising to take emergency action to give workers financial relief, including deferring tax payments for people and businesses. He also called on Congress to offer a payroll tax cut. This as a new warning from top health officials on the speed of the spread. Means it is 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. I think that's something that people can get their arms around and understand. And now the State Department advising all U.S. citizens to reconsider all travel abroad. And as for President Trump's payroll tax proposal, that has strong opposition from both parties on Capitol Hill. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. All right, National Basketball Association has suspended its season until further notice after a single player tested positive for coronavirus. Rudy Gobert on the Utah Jazz is the first player to test positive for the virus. The league has been shut down for the foreseeable future, which could cost teams hundreds of millions of dollars. The NBA released a statement saying any team that played the Jazz within the last 11 days must self-quarantine. The Spurs are not one of the teams who will participate in the quarantine. Silver and Black last played the Jazz back on February 21st. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade has been postponed. This is the first time that's happened in its 258-year history. The postponement is due to the growing fears of the coronavirus. The parade is known for drawing in tens of thousands of people to celebrate Irish heritage. You know, there's all sorts of organizations that kind of keep tabs on media organizations. I wonder in now in any given day how many times we are actually saying the word coronavirus. A, a bunch, a bunch. And just more on the coronavirus, I saw a tweet just this morning from Ellen DeGeneres. She's now closing all of her shows to the public. And she's very apologetic, but you know, even Good Morning America, they're no longer allowing a live audience either. Right. Yep. The ripple effects do continue. We're going to try to keep up for it for you. Well, we will do our best to keep up for you. 438, 67 degrees. If you're holding on to an old dishwasher simply because it still works, you might want to think again. Still ahead on GMSA, how switching to a newer model can help you save on energy bills. Oh, in a big way. And it's something we've been talking about a lot. And no, it's not coronavirus. It's census. It's the census. And why it's so important to participate. We'll have more coming up next. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's Friday Eve, everybody, almost at the weekend. Mike has a look at your forecast coming up. Starting today, invitations to participate in the 2020 census will be sent out to those living in Bear County. You will have until May to take part in the census, and you can respond online, on the phone, or by mail. In May, volunteers will start knocking on doors in an effort to make sure that everyone really is counted. That count is important. It determines how much funding states get and where all the money will go. The U.S. Census Bureau says it's important children are counted, too. Right now on our website, by the way, we have an entire category dedicated to the census. From questions about the census to important facts to know, all the information is on ksat.com. Just go to our homepage and click census under the news tab. Also on our website, a list of San Antonio spots that have a connection to Selena Quintanilla. And mark your calendars, a one-hour special Siempre Selena is airing April 12th at 9 p.m. here on KSAT, ksat.com, and on our streaming app. The special will be celebrating the legacy of the Queen of Tejano. Also be a Siempre Selena celebration hosted by KSAT at the Rustic on April 7th over at the Rim. For more details, go to ksat.com. Those are nice moves, Michael. Yeah. He's over on the side doing his little salsa dance. He's got a little salsa in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't be embarrassed. 442, 67 degrees. There's a reason we call him Twinkle Toes Osterhage. <laughs>
If you have an old dishwasher, <laughs> you might want to listen to what newer models have to offer. Plus the inside scoop from those living in Italy and what to expect in the coronavirus crisis. Details next in your GMA First Look. And this morning's GMA First Look, words of warning from those living in Italy. Things are changing um, dramatically from one day to the next. And um, now I'm starting to have friends who are getting sick and their parents are getting sick. And so it's starting to get um, very, very personal. Christina Higgins, an American mother, describing what it's like in Italy in a Facebook post now going viral. Now telling her friends and family back home to not take this virus lightly. Make it very clear to them that this is coming and this is already in the United States. You're only weeks behind us and you, you need to know that. <laughs> so um, you need to, people need to take action now. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more from Italy, plus coast-to-coast -coast coverage of the virus's spread here in America. Plus, George Stephanopoulos goes one-on-one -on -one with Vice President Mike Pence. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. You know the saying, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Well, you may feel that way about your old dishwasher, but 12 on your sides, Marilyn Mort says a new dishwasher may just save you water and money. Girls, come empty the dishwasher, please. The biggest problem is having the dishwasher emptied. Despite the battles, the Claire family is glad the dishwasher keeps humming along. My dishwasher is over 13 years old, and we don't plan on replacing it anytime soon. It's wise to get the most out of your appliances, but if you are on the fence, Consumer Reports says there are a lot of reasons to consider a new dishwasher. Today's dishwashers just cost less to run. If your dishwasher is more than eight years old, a new one could use 15% less electricity and 20% less water. Today's dishwashers are also more effective when it comes to tackling your dirty dishes, and that's because many come with soil sensors. Soil sensors scan the water at the beginning of a cycle and automatically adjust the wash cycle depending on how much grime it detects. CR says with soil sensors, resist the urge to pre-rinse your dishes. Instead, just scrape off the big bits of food. Pre-rinsing actually tricks the dishwasher into thinking that your dishes are cleaner than they actually are, so it could cut the cycle short, leaving your dishes kind of dirty. Manufacturers have also addressed another big gripe, wet dishes. Manufacturers have come up with a bunch of ways to get dishes drier. One of the ways is to have the door automatically open to release steam and speed up evaporation. If you're ready to buy a new one, CR says a best buy is this Bosch Ascenta for $500. It cleans and dries and is easy on the energy. Marilyn Moritz, Case at 12 News. 447. Let's check on the roadways. I got a tweet about a major accident shut down 281. What, what's going on with that? Yeah, Leslie, well, that just opened up. I had tweeted that or tweeted that earlier and sent out a push alert that uh, 281 northbound was closed, just opened up here about 10 minutes ago. So that highway is free flowing. Great news for everyone. All right, we have this accident right now. Just came out. This is a Nacogdoches Road at Topper Ryan Road, just south there of 35. Uh, this is a major intersection, so just be careful if you're heading that way. SAPD has been on scene for about 15 minutes. Hopefully they can get it cleared up here pretty soon. All right, let's do some drive times real quick. If you're on 1604 westbound from US Highway 281 to I-10, six minutes. And if you're on 281 southbound from Boulevardy to 1604, five minutes. Good times there. All right, let's take a look at the trans guy. 35 and 410 looking great right now. 37 at Jones in the southeast side. Very little cars on the roadway there. Uh, traffic very light. And 35 at FM 1103. It looks a little bit heavy for uh, this time of day. And uh, 10 in Dominion uh, looks great as well. Thank you, Nick. Today was a close one. Mike and I own the same necktie, and we were <laughs> super close. This is not it. It's close, but I, I almost wore that one today. I was thinking about well, that. Well, is that because really a bad thing if you have matching ties? No, no, no. Seeing? Well, because Leslie has to quit doing the two-for-one sales when she buys his birthday <laughs> gift. So. Has it ever happened before? Well, really? Oh, it's happened. At it's, least I'm giving you a gift. That's right. That's true. Well, what happened was is he saw my tie, and he's like, I really like that. So I was like, I got to get him the tie. So you got him I the got tie. him the tie, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and that's what's happening behind the scenes at KSAT's morning. You're show. welcome, San Antonio. Yeah. Could have made it through the day without hearing that. I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yesterday, uh, as the sun was just coming out, we had a lot of fog around there, and this was that, that one little moment when we had some sunshine, and then all of a sudden the clouds kind of kind of moved back on in here. Um, I think we're going to be we're going to be looking a lot more in the way of clouds 
today starting off, but then we'll have uh, sunshine in the afternoon. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And let's see, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Let me try this again. Come on. There we go. Um, we've got, uh, like I said, a lot of clouds out there as of right now. Visibility is very good around the area. Hints of some fog and, you know, we're going to have to watch this as the morning rolls on as we usually do, but it's nothing like what we saw around here yesterday as of right now. Temperatures uh, once again are 15, almost 20 degrees above normal. Normal low is 50. We are in the uh, mid 60s and it's the humidity that makes a lot of difference around there because with the cloud cover with the humidity, that's like a big wet blanket and you're not going to be cooling down all that much. And so that's what's helping to keep temperatures on the, the warm side of things. Wind is out of the south about 5, 10 miles per hour, a little bit breezier down here along the, the coastal plain. So this is at the surface, but then you look upstairs in the atmosphere, and there's all the moisture in the mid to upper level. So, you know, we're not going to have just completely clear blue skies at all. And that's going to be the situation through the foreseeable future. But this is that that flow that's coming in here off of the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. More on that in just a second. So we've got a lot of clouds starting off today and then we'll see some sunshine mixed in later on this afternoon. We're going to make it back up into the low 80s and that's going to be a number you see across the board through at least about the middle part of next week. Temperatures will stay five in some cases close to 10 degrees above normal. Tomorrow we start off a lot of clouds, some sunshine in the afternoon, but I think we're going to be leaning toward the cloudier side tomorrow. And then late tomorrow night, there could be a couple of showers trying to pop up, especially northwest of the hill country. And then that somewhat stronger disturbance is going to start to work its way in here, and that's going to give us better rain chances by Saturday and Sunday. We're looking at a good 50% chance of uh, showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. The atmosphere is going to be a little bit on the uh, kind of the volatile side on Saturday. I don't think anything big, but just one or two of those storms out there. Here's the big flow coming in off the uh, Pacific Ocean, and there is a low out here to the west of us, and as that gets closer, that's going to help to kind of ramp up the chances for some rain by Saturday and Sunday. We'll still keep a couple of them around first part of the week, and then we go into the middle of next week. And I think we actually kind of go up a little bit for some rain chances as it looks right now. I guess the best thing to take away from the, uh, the forecast is warm and humid and not an overabundance of sunshine in the, the long term. 74 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. We'll see some sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on today. 82 for high temperatures, so about 10 above normal. And then tomorrow we still stay right around 80 and it's going to be very kind. This is almost as far as temperatures are concerned, almost a summer kind of a weather pattern where you don't get any change really in temperatures. Lows are going to be staying about uh, 10 to 15 above normal, high temperatures almost 10 above normal. And then we have showers and thunderstorms around Saturday, Sunday, a couple of them uh, first of the week, and then a little bit better chance once again by Wednesday. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. You're very welcome. Don't Leslie. forget to wear green on St. <clears throat> Patty's Day. And, you pinch and nice right. tie. Five, uh, 453, 67 degrees. Next on GMSA, some TV shows are going to sound a lot different next week. How the spread of the coronavirus is impacting late night talk shows. Okay, coronavirus affects none of these. Pick three numbers. Two, zero, two, with a fireball of one. Daily four numbers, five, seven, six, seven, fireball, six. And your cash five numbers, 11, 16, 17, 23, 29. Lotto, six, nine, 24, 27, 48, 49. And Powerball, four, 29, 49, 50. 67, two is the power ball and the power play of four. The late night talk shows are going to sound a lot different starting next week. Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, John Oliver, and more ditching the studio audience over concern about the spread of coronavirus. They follow Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, which made the move earlier this week, and season 41 of Survivor, which was supposed to start filming later this month in Fiji, is delayed production. Stars including Mira Sorvino reacting to Harvey Weinstein being sentenced Wednesday to 23 years in prison for rape and sexual assault. The Oscar winner, who herself has accused Weinstein of sexual harassment, writing on Twitter that she cried tears of amazement and expressed gratitude that the justice system worked on behalf of all of Weinstein's victims. The Mouse teaming up with the Beatles, the Walt Disney Studios will release Peter Jackson's upcoming documentary on the Fab Four called The Beatles Get Back. 
The Lord of the Rings director created the doc from 55 hours of unseen footage of the band recording the album Let It Be in 1969. And it has the blessing of surviving Beatles, Paul McCartney, and Ringo Starr. Get Back is due out September 4th. And he's seen fire, he's seen rain, but hopefully today, he sees some birthday cake. James Taylor is 72, I'm while Emmy-winning actor Courtney B. Vance is 60. Heads. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 3 till 5, 67 degrees. Star Wars store, John Boyega has a new project with Netflix. Still ahead on GMSA at 5, the new feature films his production company is focusing on. Apple sales have decreased, but that's not stopping them on GMSA 5 why the company is actually increasing production of one of those most popular devices. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Outside with live cam, we are at Friday Eve and we've still got quite a bit of moisture out there. Very, very mild start to our day. Temperatures running in the mid to upper 60s. We'll talk to Mike, get his forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, March 12th. Welcome to your Friday Eve. It is very warm out there again, and this pattern is going to stick around for a while, a while right, Mike? Yes, and uh, it, also the rain is going to start to work its way in here. I'm just uh, doing a couple of quick little adjustments on my computer, but uh, yeah, we have the uh, chances for some rain, not really the next couple of days, but uh, going into the weekend, we are going to start to see that chance for a few uh, showers and thunderstorms around here. And as far as temperatures, my computer is kind of taking a second to get warmed up here. Temperatures are starting off about 15 degrees above normal, and we are going to see temperatures then stay on the above normal side all the way in through the, the middle portion of next week. Now around the area right now, you know something, this computer is just going to be slow, so let's just go to the maps right now. As far as visibility, we have got a little bit of fog showing up. There's not as much as what we had yesterday. Uh, just kind of be on the lookout for it. We've got some hints of it around there because obviously there's so much moisture uh, and dew points and temperatures are very close to each other. 67 here in town, 66 Ball Verde, and same thing at Stinson. And then you look at the dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the air. They're very, very close to these actual air temperatures. Now we do have a cloud cover, so that's going to prevent things from falling too awfully much. But uh, like I said, we'll just have to be on the lookout for a couple of uh, patches of fog later on this morning. Oak is getting up there. So if you feel, you know, the itchy water eyes or any nose, yeah, good old oak season. A lot of those uh, little, as I call them, the little dingle fobs are starting to, uh, to start to sprout on some of the oak trees and the leaves are falling as well. Mold is on the moderate side. Hackberry is moderate. Warm and humid, maybe a patch of fog this morning. Partly cloudy, low 80s. So uh, not a bad looking day, but yes, definitely on the, the humid side. About the same tomorrow, more clouds, still very warm. It's going to stay warm throughout the rest of the forecast period. Then we go in the weekend showers, a couple of thunderstorms are going to be possible Saturday and Sunday and even in the first part of next week and it stays definitely on the warm side. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis and he keeps sending out these push alerts about more and more accidents. Yeah, no, everything is finally cleared up on the major highways. 281's clear. Everything else is looking smooth if you're on the highway, but we're still working on this accident. It's going to be on Nacogdoches Road and Topper Wine Road. SCPD has been on scene for about 30 minutes now. Hopefully they can get this one cleared up here uh, fast. All right, we have uh, some drive times for you. If you're on eastbound 151 to 1604 to Highway 90, you got nine minutes. And if you're on eastbound 90 to 1604 to I-35, 10 minutes. So looking really good there. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide now. 10 in Dominion. Oh, man, there's very little cars on the road. It's a far out shot there. 10 West and 410 is looking good. 281 in Jones Maltzberger. Uh, very good, smooth. And uh, 281 in Windy Way where we had the closure earlier. Looking nice and open. All right, Mark Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. With the state seeking the death penalty for an accused cop killer, Otis McCain, jury selection, which is now underway, becomes more complex. McCain is accused in the execution-style shooting of veteran SAP detective Benjamin Marconi. Case that's Paul Venema takes a look at how jury selection is conducted in death penalty cases. Both prosecutors and defense attorneys are in the process of reviewing questionnaires completed by 200 potential jurors in the capital murder case of Otis McCain. The next step, the lawyers and McCain will meet here with individual prospective jurors to review their questionnaire. They give you an insight into the thoughts uh, and views 
of the panel members before they come to court. The stakes here are as high as they get since prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. McCain is accused of shooting veteran SAPD detective Ben Marconi to death as Marconi sat in his patrol car. Both the state and the defense team have identical definitions of what they're looking for in a juror. So someone that can be open-minded, that can really be open-minded and doesn't have extreme views on either end. Their job as a juror could be complex. If they convict McCain, they'll have to consider two special issues. The special issues are very technical and you really, really have to explain it to them. Those issues are, is the defendant a future danger to society? And are there any mitigating circumstances that dictate that the death penalty not be enforced? If the answer to each question is no, the sentence is execution. If one question is answered yes, it's life in prison without the possibility of parole. Interviewing prospective jurors, which normally takes about a day or two in most cases, is expected to last at least a month. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to be done before a jury takes their place here. At this point, it looks like that'll happen on the 27th of next month. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. The latest on the growing coronavirus concerns, it evolves uh, by the day. Thousands of cases continue to spread across the nation and around the globe. As a precaution, many schools, particularly universities and colleges, are now making that transition to online classes and large group events, especially sporting events, are now canceling at a rapid rate. The president, Donald Trump, announcing last night from the Oval Office flights from Europe will be suspended for 30 days, effective tomorrow. President Donald Trump announcing that he will delay the tax deadline for people affected by the coronavirus. President Trump will instruct the Treasury Department to allow individuals and businesses to defer their tax payments beyond the April 15th filing deadline. This applies to those who have been negatively impacted by COVID-19. In your other morning headline, shares tumbled in Asia after the World Health Organization declared coronavirus a global pandemic. Japan's benchmark skidded 4.4% yesterday. Thailand's markets dropped 9 and Cindy's dropped 7.4%. Stocks on Wall Street here in the U.S. sharply falling. Investors now waiting for more aggressive action from the U.S. government to help with the economy uh, during the outbreak. Odell Sporting Goods has filed for bankruptcy and plans to shut down all 150 stores. The pressures came from increasing competitors like Amazon and Walmart. Most of their stores are in the Northeast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I remember a bunch of them out kind of up towards the Baltimore area living out east. They've struggled for a little while now. That's sad. I hate to see that. Me too. Uh, brick and mortar still continues to struggle in most cases. 507, 67 degrees. Unhappy with your phone service? Still ahead on GMSA. The new affordable phone plan Verizon is launching. Hand sanitizers flying off the shelves after the break. Which stores are placing limits on cleaning supplies and those sanitizers? And a look outside once again with live cam. Almost at the weekend, although the kids don't want it to get here too quick because they've been on spring break. Welcome back. It's 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, those hoping not to contract the coronavirus may find themselves running out of options. Many stores, including Target and Walmart, are placing limits on the sale of hand sanitizer and disinfectant wipes. Target is limiting customers to six containers of wipes and hand sanitizers per person. Walmart is managing its inventory to limit items that are in usually high demand, which means policies could vary from store to store. Verizon announcing it's launching a new phone service called Yahoo Mobile. The plan offers unlimited talk, text, and data on a 4G network for $40 a month. Users will also get a Yahoo ad-free email account. And Sephora is changing some of its policies amid the coronavirus rather, pandemic. All paid and free in-store services at Sephora are suspended. The cosmetics retailer is taking precautionary measures to protect employees and customers. Sephora is also undertaking weekly deep cleanings of its stores and distribution centers. The beauty chain is also waiving shipping fees through March to encourage shopping from home. Disneyland is set to open its new Avengers campus July 18th. Guests at the California Adventure Park will have a chance to train with all their favorite superheroes from Iron Man to Captain America, even Black Widow can also help Spider-Man save New York from spider bots and learn the secrets of the mystic arts from Dr. Strange. 512, 67 degrees.
The entertainment world is also being affected by the coronavirus outbreak. Ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you what major events are being canceled due to the virus. And production actually increases for iPads. They're ready to ramp up. Apple saying they're going to increase production amid decreases in sales, but we'll tell you why in Tech Bytes. Tech bites. Prices are being paid for cleaning products during the coronavirus outbreak are very much in focus and action is being taken. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Monica Sar Abdi have details. In today's Tech Bites, price gouging on Amazon amid the coronavirus spread. A consumer advocacy group looked into prices on items like masks and hand sanitizer. It found price hikes by third party sellers and Amazon itself. One example, mass prices 166% higher than before the virus crisis. Amazon says it is restricting sales of some virus-related products due to gouging. And several big tech companies took part in a White House teleconference about the virus. It reportedly ran about two hours and included discussions about stopping the spread of virus conspiracy theories on social media. And Apple is increasing its iPad production in China. That's because of increased demand among Chinese parents who want to help their children learn while their schools are closed because of the virus, so many parents doing whatever they can to help during this pandemic. Learning never stops. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's Thursday, time for Best of BKD behind the kitchen door. Let's take a look at some perfect San Antonio food establishment scores from around the Alamo City within the last few weeks. Whataburger at 6391 Babcock Road is on our list this morning. So is Raising Cane's at 8402 Broadway right there by San Antonio International Airport in 410. Green has multiple locations. They're one over at 10,003 Northwest Military Highway. Uh, received a perfect score. I believe that was the one at Allon Town Center. Las Chiladas Mexican Restaurant, 2387 Northwest Military Highway is also on our list. And finally, Burger Fi at 1907 Nacogdoches Road. If your place got a perfect score in the last 30 days, send us the score, bkd at ksat.com. Somebody did just that, and we will have that perfect score coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. Let's check the roadways, find out if there are any accidents to report. What's happening, Nick? Yeah, things are looking great right now, Leslie. Everything on the roadway is clear. That accident on top of Wine and Nacogdoches is now clear as well. So look at all the green on the screen. Not a lot going on right now, and that's always good news for all of y'all out there. So let's take a look outside of the trans guy. 37 and Jones looking great. Uh, FM uh, 35 and 11, uh, FM 1103, I'm sorry, is looking really good. Uh, 10 at Dominion, that far shot is looking uh, very, very light. 410 at Fredericksburg, smooth as can be. And I don't know where that is, but look good too. 281 and Winding Way, looking great. Thank you so much, Nick. So yeah, this is pretty much how it's going to stay as yeah, far as the warm temperatures. This is going to be, yeah, temperatures about through the middle part of next week at least. So highs are anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal, low temperatures 10 to 15 above normal. Yeah. At least we have some better rain chances coming in here. So the weekend um, still, I don't think it's going to be a washout, but we have, you know, a fairly chance. decent shot at some rain. A lot of folks are um, taking advantage of spring break this week. And take a look at this picture. Big Bend National Ooh. Park. I have not been there and I need to go. I've heard so many. Uh, ditto. Ditto. I mean, look at those skies out there. I've heard it's, it's a natural wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, Robert Darts former traffic officer has been there a few times and mm -hmm. speaks very highly. And there's a, a one of the rivers out there too, I guess is, is quite scenic. 
Well, there is, um, and just south of there, the, the Devil's River is one of the hot ones, especially for kayak fishing. Okay. So it's kind of the Super Bowl of kayak fishing. I'm going to head out there one day. That's a great shot. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we have got lots of clouds around this morning. Visibility is pretty good right now. We do have just a couple of hints of some fog. So, you know, the, the ingredients are there. We're not seeing as much as what we saw at this time yesterday, but just kind of keep an eye out for that as the morning rolls on. 67 here in town. Normal low temperature is 50. Again, 15, almost 20 degrees above normal. Mid 60s overall temperatures are up a little bit compared to yesterday and the dew points are up. Uh, we had a few 50s around yesterday, but you get above 60 and that's when you start to feel it. So everybody's in the uh, basically mid 60s right now on average. Wind, surface wind is out of the uh, south, uh, south to southeast, about 5 to 10 miles per hour, not overly breezy. But then upstairs in the atmosphere, the flow is coming in here out of the southwest. And so that's why we've got all of these clouds hanging on in here. We will see some sunshine thrown in later on today, kind of like what we saw yesterday. Here's the, the computer model. And again, it's got lots of clouds this morning, some sunshine mixed in this afternoon and up to the north, north of our viewing area. Uh, there's a chance for a couple of uh, showers maybe to pop up and even tomorrow. But I think all of that is going to be staying further up there to the north. As you can see, uh, some maybe trying to squeak in by uh, early Saturday morning up in far northwestern portions of the hill country. Then all of that energy is going to start to kind of slide across here. And so that's why we've got some better chances for some rain as we go into the weekend. Here's the uh, the kind of the culprit for it. We've got an upper low, which is sort of parked over here around the southwestern United States. That's pumping in the moisture and and that keeps a lot of that high level moisture in the clouds, a lot of those mid high level clouds hanging around here. And then once that finally kind of slides in our direction, or at least more of the energy comes on in here, that's going to enhance our rain chances. Because right now it's just throwing off little bits of little disturbances in our direction. So it's not really doing too awfully much. But by Saturday, even though it sort of falls apart, there is more of that energy coming on in. And that's going to give us that better chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Then right on the heels of that, Another low develops out there in the western United States that's going to sort of drop down along the coast and that's going to keep us in that southwesterly flow. So we keep a lot of mid high clouds around all the way through the middle part of next week and that's going to continue to throw little bits of energy in our direction. So you really can't rule out showers, even a couple of thunderstorms through at least the middle part of next week. Today, 74 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature today is going to make it up to 82. So we'll still be again about 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Tomorrow, about the same situation. I think we keep a lot more clouds around though tomorrow. And then we go into the weekend and better chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. I don't think it's going to be a rain out this weekend, but uh, well, maybe a good opportunity to catch up on all those shows that you want to watch on TV and then if you even a couple of showers and thunderstorms around the first part of next week. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Michael. 522 67 degrees. Celine Dion has postponed concerts due to health issues. But her doctors told her she can return to the stage coming up in your morning spotlight. A lot of players here are all your numbers in review. Pick 3202 two, with Fireball of 1. Daily four numbers 5767 seven, Fireball 6. And your cash five numbers, 11, 16, 17, 23, 29. Lotto, 6, 9, 24, 27, 48, 49. And we also have your Powerball numbers from last night, 4, 29, 49, 50, 67. Two is the Powerball with the power play of four. A lot of concerts and other entertainment events are being postponed or canceled, most of them due to the coronavirus, but not all of them. CNN's David Daniel explains in the Hollywood Minute. Celine Dion has postponed concerts in Washington, D.C. and Pittsburgh for health reasons, but it's not what you think. The singer's official Facebook page noted she had persistent cold symptoms and her doctors instructed her to rest. But, quote, after testing her, the doctors concluded that her virus was not related to COVID-19. She's expected to resume her Courage World Tour March 24th in Denver. 
I think it's important to have all people represented in our entertainment. John Boyega is representing. The Star Wars star has made a deal with Netflix to develop non-English language films about West and East Africa. Boyega says his production company, Upper Room, will partner with the streaming service on original feature films focused on African stories. No one has the correct idea of perfect timing, but... Jason's out, Woody's in. Woody Harrelson is taking over one of the lead roles in The Man from Toronto. Statham had been in talks to star with Kevin Hart in the action comedy about a deadly assassin and a perpetual bungler who are mistaken for each other. Filming is set to start this spring with a planned release date of November 20th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now 527, still 67 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, why a highway safety group is calling for more regulations on self-driving cars. Plus two lifelong best friends share their feelings on what they wish they would have known before becoming moms, how motherhood has changed their lives. And the coronavirus has impacted the 2020 presidential election. How Joe Biden plans to hold his campaign rallies coming up next. Morning, it's Thursday, the 12th of March. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Roadways still quiet? Yeah, roadways are really quiet. I guess it's tribute to spring break, but yep. other than that accident we had earlier in the morning, things are good. For some, spring break is starting to slowly come to a close. Yeah, a couple of days left. Well, it's only, well, yeah, it's Thursday. I was going to say, we are on the downhill side mm -hmm. of it. So, uh, at least I had a pretty good day yesterday. I mean, there were a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. We were shooting a story out there at SeaWorld, and there were a bunch of folks enjoying even the water park out there yesterday. It turned out to be a beautiful day. So the day. milder weather is kind of hot, hot, though. Yeah. I mean, we got up into the mid-80s yesterday. Oh, yeah, it was about, quite warm. Yeah, about 15 above normal, and it's going to be uh, pretty much like that today. Low 80s. We'll have some sunshine thrown in. It's warm and humid out there. We don't have a whole lot of fog to deal with as of right now. As a matter of fact, uh, visibility out there at the airport is very good. Just a, a couple of hints of it over <laughs> head out 90 toward Castroville and Hondo, Kerrville. You know, that's that's not too bad. And there's really nothing else. All the visibility is good elsewhere around the viewing area. So just kind of keep be on the lookout for that 67 degrees. We've been very steady all morning, 66 in comfort, even mid 60s out here in the hill country. So especially out in the hill country, temperatures are up a few degrees even compared to yesterday and the humidity is up slightly compared to yesterday. A lot of moisture out there. Just get used to it because things are really not going to be changing all that much as we go into the next uh, couple of days. Now, oak is really high, so we're really starting to get into the throes of the oak season. So you know what that is, only itchy, watery eyes and all that great yellow dust around everything. Mold and hackberry are both on the moderate side. Throughout the rest of today, 74 at noon, 82 for a high temperature. Some sunshine thrown in and about the same tomorrow. I think we see a few more clouds tomorrow. Then we get into the weekend. Then we start to get into better rain chances. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So pretty much have the roads to yourself, right, Nick? Yeah, it's been another slow morning for me, Mike, but that's always good for you out there. Well, first of all, I hope you're having a great uh, start to your Thursday morning. But yeah, like Mike would say, everything is looking good. A lot of green out there. Traffic is flowing very smoothly. No accidents to report. So good news and a good start. All right, look at this drive time. If you're from, coming from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, you got a 14 minute commute. And if you're on 35 southbound continuing on uh, there from loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, so still really good times. All right, Trans Guide 35 and 410. Traffic's light to moderate, looking good there. Let's see what else we have here. 37 in Jones. You know how that left lane likes to get stacked up there right around 7 o'clock, so just remember that. 281 and 410, my favorite shot here. Things are looking very good. And 281 at Grayson, looking great. All right, hope you continue to have a great morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you so much. Well, we are staying on top of the growing coronavirus concerns. The NBA has suspended its season until further notice after a Utah Jazz player tested positive for coronavirus. Now, the league has been shut down for the foreseeable future, and it could cost teams hundreds of millions of dollars. NBA released a statement saying any team that played the Jazz within the last 11, 11 days must self-quarantine. Now, the Spurs are not one of those teams. They will not have to self-quarantine. They last played the Jazz back on February 21st. Meanwhile, the number of coronavirus cases rises daily. Many everyday life activities are or will be affected. CNN's John Lawrence reports. President Trump in a coronavirus-based address Wednesday says an antiviral therapy will be available in record time. These treatments will significantly reduce the impact and reach of the virus. 
But in the meantime, be prepared for things like rough days on Wall Street, extensive cleanings of most surfaces, empty shelves in your grocery stores, and travel restrictions from the White House. You're going to see closing down of venues, schools, large gatherings, because you don't have an option. You're never going to bring the testing up to capacity in time. The NBA is suspending its season after at least one player tested positive for the disease. Fans attending the Oklahoma City Thunder Utah Jazz game were sent home shortly before tip off. I want my fun back. It's like our fun's getting taken away. It's ridiculous. But other basketball fans, like this one in Atlanta, approve the league's decision. I think that by eliminating the the big crowds is is a good move. Health officials say these steps are necessary to help prevent the coronavirus from spreading even faster. We're 100,000 ICU bed short. We're probably tens of thousands of breathing machines, ventilators short. What are we going to do? I mean, these are real problems, and, and this is, you know, hours and days count now, not, not, not days and weeks. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, the novel coronavirus is also taking a toll on the 2020 presidential election. Former Vice President Joe Biden will be holding a virtual event today and Monday instead of holding large crowd events in Illinois and Florida. Biden is expected to deliver remarks on the coronavirus pandemic during his visits. A highway safety group calling for more regulation to cover self-driving cars and include Tesla's autopilot and General Motors' Super Cruise. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety says drivers who use those features simply stop paying attention to the road. The organization says more restrictions should apply and some recommendations should prohibit automated lane changing. GM GM rather currently restricts the use of its Super Cruise feature to select highways. Tesla says autopilot is intended only for highways and limited access roads. Well, Congress has approved a bill to limit President Donald Trump's authority to launch military operations against Iran. It declares that... The president must win approval from Congress before engaging in further military action. President Trump is likely to veto that resolution. Supporters say the resolution is not about the president, but it's an important reassertion of congressional power to declare war. 536, uh, 67 degrees. The smallest known dinosaur skull was found by researchers in in a Myanmar mine. Still ahead on GMSA, why this small but mighty creature is described as a predator. And be on the lookout for your census invitation, what participating in the census means for your community. And take me outside with live cam. So happy to have you with us on this Thursday. Just about 540 starting today, invitations to participate in the 2020 census will be sent out to those living in Bear County. You'll have until May to take part in the census. You can respond online, by phone, or by mail. But in May, volunteers are going to be knocking at your door if you didn't fill one out. They want to make sure everyone's counted. It helps determine how much funding states will get and where the money will go. And they say it's important that children are counted as well. Right now on our website, we have an entire category dedicated to the census, from questions about the census to important facts to know all the information available right there on our homepage. Click Census under the News tab at ksat.com. And mark your calendars. Our one-hour special Siempre Salina is airing April 12th at 9 p.m. right here on KSAT, ksat.com as well, and our streaming app. The special will be celebrating the legacy of the Queen of Tejano Music. There will also be a Siempre, Siempre Selena celebration hosted by KSAT 12 and the Rustic on April 7th. More details on that, just go to KSAT.com. 540, 67 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next. Look at that little face. How sweet, just sitting there on a lap looking for a new home. You're going to meet this little girl coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Hi, sweetie. It is puppy time, and look who's here. <laughs> old face. Well, I didn't mean to say old face. Our familiar face, Chris, is here. Two old faces. <laughs> From the Animal Defense League. Good to see you, sir. Likewise. How are you? Okay. I was going to pet the dogs. Well, you know. That's okay. I'll take it. Who's this little one? This is Sweet Pea. So Sweet Pea is uh, definitely one of our current little favorites. She is a teeny tiny senior. So she is about seven years old, a Chihuahua mix, and just as sweet as can be. Just, I met her this morning and she has not left my lap since, is just 
quiet and sweet and you know just loves people she's definitely uh, a lover hasn't uttered a peep since you walked in the studio and again just I mean this is it if you want somebody who's gonna sit there on your lap watch a little TV yeah, she's she's excellent, and she's actually a perfect um, a perfect segue into talking about one of my favorite programs, which is our Seniors for Seniors mm -hmm. program. So she qualifies for that. So what Seniors for Seniors is? It's a program for any pet that is over six years old, matched with any adopter who is over 60, and we waive the adoption fee. And that is ongoing year round. Um, anytime that you know that match happens, we like to be able to make sure that it happens, you know, so that adoption fee, we'd rather spend that money on toys and treats and a bed and all that stuff because the companionship is really what we're hoping for. You know, and it's great. And we always say with the older dogs like this, you get exactly, I mean, this is what you're going to get. The personality, the size, everything else. Exactly. Most all of them are completely housebroken. You just have a new little friends. Yeah, they're, they're, they're done chewing on your shoes. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like the little puppy. So, well, if you'd like more information about Little Sweet Pea and all the other pups and older dogs and cats they have out there, 1100 Nacogdoches is the main campus or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, sir. Hey, all week we've been sharing fun activities and snacks your kids can enjoy if you're hanging out at home this spring break. The tips and tricks come from a couple of local moms. We also talked to them about motherhood. Some advice for every mom. Where is your spot at this table? E-Y-T-O-N. Sit down. Motherhood is a series of compromises, yeah. for sure. And a lot of giving up of visions you had. And there's a lot of beautiful things that you didn't know were coming. I make my hat. Okay, draw your hat. That's great. Draw. Can you make my, my hat in my hat? There's going to be a lot of things that you thought were going to be a certain way, and they're just not. <laughs> yeah. Red is my favorite color. Can you draw stick that on the line? Let go of the expectations other people have for you and just be comfortable where you are. You don't see other moms necessarily feeling overwhelmed that often, so you don't know <laughs> yourself that that's a thing until you're in it. <laughs> Here it is. Our goal was to encourage moms that they can have a simple and a healthy life at the same time. Can you make a triangle? A triangle? Yeah. Can you make a triangle? How? Straight line, that's good. And back. Oh. Yeah. Finding a community where you can commiserate together and talk about these things and not feel so alone. I didn't realize that would be so important yeah. in motherhood. They're so cute. They are. I like their t-shirts too. It's what, mommy, mom, madre, something like that. Oh, I didn't really see what it's really cute. Uh, very cute though. 546 right now. Let's check on the roadways once again, see how your traffic's looking on Thursday. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great morning. So we have one accident we're working on right now. It's going to be in the 4500 block of Old Seguin Road. Looks like a major accident here. SAPD is on scene working on get, getting this accident off the roadway, but just keep that in mind. It's right before the 410 overpass. So uh, that accident is about the only one we have. Let's take a look outside. This is Alamo Ranch, 1604 in Calabria. That's looking uh, pretty good right now, right in the far west side. 35 in North Loop 410 near that accident. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a Affecting the roadways there, 37 at Jones, looking good at 281 and 410, looking better. And let's do one more here. We have 281 at Grayson. Oh, that was like a, oh, you see it in the back, it's a light, it looked like lightning at first, but no, it's not. And 10, uh, 410 at Austin Highway, looking great. Thank you, Nick. I cannot believe it's 80 something degrees outside in the afternoons. Yeah, which is the normal high temperature once we get into a about a month from now. Yeah. It's funny you say warm that. Time. It did get warm yesterday. I got in the truck about five o'clock yesterday evening and the windows had been closed. I'm like, oh no, here's a taste. It's uh -oh. because we know it's around the corner, right? We did make it up to 86 yesterday. Oh, normal, it felt like it. And the normal high temperature though is in the, the low eight or upper 70s, low 80s. Mm -hmm. So we're way above that. Or excuse me, low 70s. My, my so when's apologies. the cool front coming? Uh, <laughs> yeah, temperatures will be down to instead of 86, it'll be 82 today. Oh, 80 on the weekend. So well, that's, wow. that's nice. Uh, yeah, we're, we're way above normal. 
Rain chances do come in here by this weekend, though, so that's going to be encouraging because, uh, you know, it's always nice to keep that going. Cool pick. pick. Very cool picture. Two coyotes were wandering through the neighborhood. Kind of looking, it's like, why are you taking my picture? It's a great shot. That does look like something from a, with a little bit of almost kind of that fog in the background there. And you can almost hear them. I know they're not wolves, but you can hear them howling in the background. Anyway, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. A lot of clouds this morning. I don't think we're going to be having too much of a great sunrise, but uh, later on this afternoon, we will see a bit more sunshine. There's nowhere near as much fog as what we had yesterday, but there's still a couple of hints of it. So just kind of be on the lookout for some fog because we've got obviously these very warm temperatures. These numbers are more like what we would see. Oh, about uh, going into the first part of May as far as a normal low. Normal low temperature in town right now is 50 and then we've got a ton of humidity out there and so that's what's helping to keep temperatures so warm as well as the cloud cover. Wind is out of the south at uh, about 5 10 miles per hour and that continues to pull in the moisture here at the surface and then upstairs in the atmosphere the flows coming in here out of the southwest and and that's all due to a system out there, which is just kind of, it's like a moisture pump, and that pumps all the moisture from uh, the Pacific Ocean. Also, it sends little disturbances in here. Now, there's not enough really to spark any sort of a shower around here today. Tomorrow, a little bit different situation up to the north, and like I said, by the weekend, we have a better chance for a couple of showers. So we will see some sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on today, and then tomorrow, starting off with a lot of clouds and probably leaning toward the cloudier side by late tomorrow night and into Saturday. There's some of those uh, showers trying to develop out in far northwest portions of the hill country. So here's the the moisture pump. It is this low out here uh, right around the southwestern United States, northwestern Mexico. There's all the moisture coming on in and this upper low, which does sort of not completely fall apart, but it's not going to be as pronounced as time rolls on. So as of right now, it just keeps the moisture coming in here and then it sort of slides on in and there's going to be a bit more energy coming in our direction. So that's going to give us the chance for some rain by Saturday and Sunday, as well as into the first part of next week, because another low is going to be developing out there to the west and that will continue to pump the moisture in here. So we can keep a fair amount of clouds around a little bit of sunshine the first part of the week, but also little disturbances will slide on in here and that's going to keep us in the chance for a scattered shower, thunderstorm or two, even into the first part of next week. 74 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And then later on this afternoon, partly cloudy. So some sunshine thrown on in 82 degrees. So once again, about 10 degrees above normal. And tomorrow, roughly the same situation. Uh, maybe a few more clouds hanging around here. And then we do have a chance for a few, about a 50% chance for some uh, showers, even a couple of thunderstorms are going to be possible Saturday and maybe Sunday, even in the first part of next week with temperatures staying again way above normal. Well, I hope I do get some rain this weekend. Yes, that would be that would be really good. So I got the grass cut last week and so should now it's time to rain. Rain, rain, okay. rain. Right now it is 551, 67 degrees. Dinosaurs are known to be massive creatures, but some researchers' newest discovery says otherwise. After the break, the smallest dinosaur skull ever found and why they say it was likely a predator. Now let's look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, zero, two, fireball one. Daily four numbers, five, seven, six, seven, fireball six. Cash five numbers, 11, 16, 17, 23, 29. Lotto numbers, six, nine, 24, 27, 48, 49. And your Powerball numbers, four, 29, 49, 50, 67. Two is the Powerball with a power play of four. The Late Night Talk Shows are going to sound a lot different starting next week. Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, John Oliver, and more ditching the studio audience over concern about the spread of coronavirus. They follow Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, which made the move earlier this week, and season 41 of Survivor, which was supposed to start filming later this month in Fiji, has delayed production. Stars including Mira Sorvino reacting to Harvey Weinstein being sentenced Wednesday to 23 years in prison for rape and sexual assault. The Oscar winner, who herself has accused Weinstein of sexual harassment, writing on Twitter that she cried tears of amazement and expressed gratitude that the justice system worked on behalf of all of Weinstein's victims. The Mouse teaming up with the Beatles, the Walt Disney Studios will release Peter Jackson's upcoming documentary on the Fab Four called The Beatles Get Back. The Lord of the Rings director created the doc from 55 hours of unseen footage of the band recording the album Let It Be in 1969. 
and it has the blessing of surviving Beatles, Paul McCartney, and Ringo Starr. Get Back is due out September 4th. And he's seen fire, he's seen rain, but hopefully today, he sees some birthday cake. James Taylor is 72, I'm while the, Emmy-winning the, actor Courtney B. Vance is 60. Heads. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have full team coverage of the latest developments in the coronavirus emergency. Now officially a pandemic, President Trump addressing the nation from the Oval Office last night, announcing new measures to help stop the spread of the virus here and also proposals to help workers. While more cities and states are reacting to the outbreak, limiting large gatherings, closing schools. The big question this morning, will our hospitals and the medical staff be able to handle a massive jump in cases? Vice President Pence will join us this morning right here on GMA. Not all dinosaurs fit the stereotype of massive and terrifying. Researchers came across the fossil of the smallest dinosaur ever, reportedly in the country of Myanmar. The skull of an unknown species, a bird-like dinosaur trapped in a chunk of 99 million year old amber. This is like right out of the movie Jurassic Park. For size reference, it's smaller than the size of the tiniest hummingbird alive today. It's head the size of a thumbnail or smaller. Now maybe small, but it was mighty. The jaw packed more than 100 ser serrated teeth and its eyes were bulging and lizard-like. Not exactly cute, is it? About three till right now, 68 degrees ahead on Good Morning San Antonio at six. We'll give you the lowdown on laws that will impact families with babies born with Down syndrome. Trans guide right now. We'll check back in with Officer Nick Solis of the San Antonio Police Department. Our traffic expert will get you updated on what to steer clear of going up into the top of the hour. A woman sent to the hospital in critical condition after being hit by a car. We have the details on what police say happened. Take a look outside with live cam. It's another mild start to your day. Mike is standing by with the forecast and rain chances are in it. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is Thursday. It is March 12th. A lot of developments overnight concerning the coronavirus with the NBA postponing the season. Uh, travel now blocked from Europe starting Friday, I believe. Right That's right, 30 for 30 days. days. The president announcing that from the Oval Office last night. Yes, yeah, several things. So we'll get you caught up on all of that coming up in just a minute. But we want to get your forecast in there, too, and check on traffic. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. It, once again, is hi. Hi. <laughs> It is once again very warm, very humid. We don't have as much fog around the area this morning as what we had yesterday, but boy, oh boy, I mean, these temperatures are like almost late spring mm -hmm. kind of readings. We do have some uh, rain chances coming up in the forecast, too. Good. Okay. Yeah, take a look outside right now with live cam, and uh, visibility is good out there, it, but you can almost, uh, I know it looks fuzzy, uh, you can almost kind of see the humidity, it seems like, because it is so high. There are a couple of hints of fog out to the west. Hondo, six miles visibility, Kerrville at seven, so it's not anything too bad, but again, just a hint of it, so keep an eye out in some of the low-lying areas. Uh, 68 degrees, we actually went up a degree in the past hour, 66 Bolverde in mid-60s in parts of the uh, hill country. So temperatures are up compared to yesterday by a degree or two, and the humidity dew points are up uh, by a degree or two compared to yesterday, and so that's why we do have these very warm conditions. Cloud cover, the humidity keeps us very warm. Oak. Starting to feel it. Yep, we're starting to get into the season. All the leaves are falling, and now we're starting to get the little uh, dingle fobs, as I like to refer to them. <laughs> Those annoying little things starting to uh, sprout on the trees. So, yeah, we're definitely getting into the oak season. Mold and hackbear both on the, uh, the moderate side. And throughout the rest of today, temperatures... Well, we'll stay right around where we are right now, mid to uh, even some upper 60s this morning, and then we make it into the uh, low to mid 70s at noon. Some sunshine, and we'll see some sunshine thrown with the clouds later on today, and we're going to be well above normal by about 10 degrees with a high up to 82. Like I said, we do have those rain chances that are going to start to really pick up by the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Nick Solis, and uh, it was busy earlier this morning. Calm now. It's not even a dingle fob on the roadway, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but things are looking great out here right now. So if you are heading to work, expect a very smooth ride because we got a lot of green on the screen. Not a lot going on right now. 
except one accident, and that's going to be on the 4500 block of Old Seguin Road right there just before the 410 overpass. Officers have been on scene here for about 25 to 30 minutes now, and hopefully they are going to get this accident cleared up very soon. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're 1604 eastbound from the Holotus area to Randolph Air Force Base, 27 minutes, and back from Randolph Air Force Base to Holotus, 27 minutes. So very consistent and nice smooth ride if you're heading both ways. All right, let's take a look outside at the Trans Guy. 37 in Jones, the southeast side looking good. 281 and 410 looking great there. Not too much going on. The roadways, 281 and Grayson still looking very light to moderate, or not even moderate, just light. And West Avenue and 410, 10 and Austin Highway, everything is looking great. Well, I hope you have a wonderful morning and an even better day. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. New this morning, a woman is in serious condition after being hit by a car while crossing the street. It happened just after 11 last night in the 300 block of San Pedro Avenue, just north of downtown. According to police, the driver pulled over, helped the woman. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. No word on if the driver will face any charges. San Antonio police looking for suspects involved in a drive-by shooting. This happened just before 11 last night in the 6,000 block of Lock-In Street on the west side. According to police, a man was sitting on his porch when a vehicle passed by and suspects fired several shots. The man was taken to a nearby hospital with a gunshot wound. Now the latest on the coronavirus outbreak here at home. We're still waiting for the next group of Grand Prince's cruise ship passengers to arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for quarantine. 98 passengers arrived by plane Tuesday night. They were all reported to be asymptomatic. Going forward, <coughs> only Texas residents will be kept for the full length of the quarantine at JBSA Lackland. According to the Texas Department of State Health Services, there are 21 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Texas. That does not include the eight evacuees currently in isolation at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease here in San Antonio. And concerns have led to changes on several college and university campuses. UTSA, Alamo Colleges, Texas A&M University San Antonio, Our Lady of the Lake, and University of the Incarnate Word, also Trinity University, are extending spring break before transitioning to online classes. The online classes are expected to start on March 23rd, but how long that lasts is a different for every school. Trinity University is asking students to check out of their own campus on campus housing unless they receive an exemption from university officials and athletics for the remainder of the spring semester have been canceled. There's a lot to keep up here. Uh, we've got more and we're going to have a kind of a running updated list of closures, cancellations and things affected on our website at ksat.com. And we will continue to update that for you. So just keep, keep an eye on it. Almost hourly. Well, in Italy, nearly 200 people have died in one day from coronavirus and the overall death toll now stands at 897. The country is already on lockdown, but new rules are banning all stores from opening except for grocery stores and pharmacies. ABC's Maggie Ruley has an update this morning. Those are my roommates up ahead. Right now, we're going out to get the groceries. We're a bit south of Milan. Um, In Italy, it's become a familiar scene. To put it into perspective, this is the highway that every commuter uses to get in and out of the city. A life confined to his apartment and the occasional grocery run. As the entire country of Italy enters its third day of lockdown due to the spread of the novel coronavirus, COVID-19. In nearby Florence. The atmosphere is very surreal. Another usually bustling street quieted. Police is stopping people because you're not allowed to move. For millions around the world, if empty streets and grocery lines are not yet a reality, they soon could be. Move beyond your disbelief and start to come to terms with what is coming. And as public life adjusts to contend with the global pandemic, on a personal level, social distancing can be isolating and, well, awkward. Social support is one of our fundamental tools for dealing with stress. So when we have a stressor that actually impedes our ability to access social support, it can exacerbate stress. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, London. What it look? All right, President Trump has canceled several public events after giving an address about the coronavirus outbreak last night. The White House says the president will no longer travel to events in Colorado and Nevada this week. According to the president's public schedule, he is set to meet with Prime Minister Leo Varadkar. Bar 
Tucker today. This comes after the president addressed the coronavirus and reiterated experts' warnings to avoid large crowds, especially for the elderly. U.S. service members and their families are also being impacted from the outbreak. Starting tomorrow, they will be under new travel restrictions. The Department of Defense says traveling is restricted for level three countries designated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This includes permanent change of station, temporary duty, and government-funded leave. Level three locations are China, Iran, South Korea, and several European countries. The Pentagon says the policy will be reviewed at the end of a 60-day period. Time check right now, 6.08, 68 degrees. The price of hand sanitizers and other items associated with the coronavirus sold by third-party sellers have peaked. Ahead of GMSA, we will find out what Amazon is doing to prevent this from happening. One in 700 babies is born with Down syndrome may face developmental delays as they grow. Just ahead, helping families plan ahead by giving the lowdown on loss that will impact them. I think it was spiked. Okay. The prices have spiked. That makes sense. Trying to get Amazon to crack down on that. Want to go outside? And let's go outside with live cam. And not quite as foggy as it has been the last couple of days. No, it's but not. Certainly still warm. Right now, 612, many parents raising kids with Down syndrome will tell you their kids are empathetic and loving but require extra attention, and that doesn't stop when they turn 18. Here's the challenge. Legally, parents may lo no longer have a say. GMSA producer Jared Hoeing takes a look at a program helping parents and young adults with special needs navigate the legal system. 21-year-old Annie Sear is determined, funny, and... <laughs> How's that feel? Annie loves the water and takes scuba lessons at a local pool. At home, she's proud to show off her other accomplishments. This, am I warm? But as Annie was navigating high school, Lynn worried about what was coming next. It doesn't matter what your functionality is. At 18 years old, you are an adult. Attorney Katherine Davey specialized in estate planning, guardianship, and special needs trusts, even before her daughter May, now six, was born. She's got blonde hair and blue eyes and big purple glasses and a giant personality, and she has Down syndrome. Davey uses her legal expertise to help families access their adult child's medical records and make financial decisions on their behalf. Davey also organizes a free seminar in April and September called Lowdown on the Law to empower families with education. <laughs> Thibodeau Sear credits Davy with helping her become Annie's guardian advocate and plan for her future. Davy says daughter May is her inspiration. My kid's amazing. My kid has given me purpose and meaning and drive. I'll never retire. I'll never quit doing what I'm doing. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Helling. 613, 67 degrees. Time to check your morning commute. Traffic, how's it looking? It's looking great right now, Leslie. We have one accident, another accident just came out, two total. Looks like one's about to clear it, but this one just came out. This one's on the 240th block of East Summit Avenue, right there off of 281 in Mulberry. Uh, looks like this is a one vehicle accident uh, where a vehicle ran into a tree. Everyone's okay, but nonetheless, it is there. Keep that in mind if you're headed in that way. All right, we have this accident, 4500 Old Seguin Road. Saw that the wreckers are on scene, and I think they did tow those vehicles away, so this one's just about wrapped up, and that's good news for all of you. All right, let's take a look outside at the Trans Guide now. We got 35, Wiener was good, 10 in Days of Vala. Uh, traffic's starting to pick up there. Uh, 35 in Topper Wine. Oh, yeah, those southbound lanes at 35 picking up for sure. Uh, 10 in Callahan again, <laughs> looking good, and uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, 10 and free. Oh, well, there we go. Inbounds and outbounds starting to pick up as well. Thank you very much, Officer Solis. No problem. So spring break's over this Sunday. Mm -hmm. A few more days and mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of rain towards Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday, <laughs> Saturday that's and today. Sunday. We <laughs> Thursday, Friday, that's it. Uh, we do have the chance for some rain kind of moving on in here. Once we then start that chance of rain, uh, we'll still keep a few couple of showers around in the first part of next week. So okay. I don't think it's going to rain constantly, but there will be a few showers. Good, even bring it. Around I want some rain. Saturday. It'd be nice to have just a, a rainy Saturday to stay no. outside. No. So. I got plans on Saturday. That's oh, why. <laughs> outside, yeah. Except where Nick is. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, yesterday we had There goes Medina Lake. <laughs> 
How'd you know? <laughs> we did have some sunshine around here yesterday. It's not going to rain in Medina Lake, Nick. So. <laughs> yes. It's not. Yeah, all around Medina Lake, not there, Nick. You'll be fine. <laughs> Just for you, Nick. And if you believe that, anyway. Uh, <laughs> but it won't be raining constantly on Saturday, by the way, on the serious side. We uh, did have, like I said, some sunshine yesterday in the afternoon, and so made for a good-looking sunset. And I think that's going to be the situation today. We'll have kind of the clouds breaking up a little bit as the day rolls on. Okay. It is warm out there. As a matter of fact, we are, it feels like mid to late spring. Forecast high temperatures 82 and 65 and about 80 the next couple of days. The normals are 73 and 50. So we're, you know, 10, 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And then even as we go into the latter part of the week, in the latter part of the month, I mean, the normal temperatures are only 7754 at the end of the month. You have to get to April 20th to have a normal high temperature of 82 degrees and May 5th to have a normal low temperature of 65. So yeah, we're a little bit uh, ahead of schedule and it's going to stay very mild all the way through, uh, like I said, the weekend and even going into the first part of next week. So we've got a lot of clouds out there this morning and there are hints of some lower visibilities, uh, maybe in some low lying areas. You want to watch out for a little bit of fog as we approach sunrise, but nothing like what we had around here yesterday. Temperatures overall are up a couple of degrees compared to yesterday, especially in portions of the hill country, staying in the uh, mid 60s. Very consistent all around here, thanks to the cloud cover, thanks to the humidity that we have. And yeah, humidity, dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. They have gone up compared to uh, yesterday a little bit as well. That's due to the wind out of the south to the southeast primarily. And then aloft, we've got all the moisture coming in here from the uh, Pacific Ocean and got a couple of systems out there. It's sort of a one right after another. The overall pattern won't be changing all that much. So we keep a lot of clouds around the first part of the day. Sunshine it mixed in with the clouds later on this afternoon. Clouds come back in here and I think we keep more clouds around throughout most of the day tomorrow. And then by late tomorrow night and early, early Saturday morning, we start to see some of those showers and thunderstorms developing uh, way up there northwest of the hill country. And then those disturbances will kind of start to work their way across here. So we're still looking at about a good 50% chance for a few showers and thunderstorms around Saturday and Sunday. 74 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies and a high temperature up to 82 with partly cloudy skies, kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Roughly the same thing tomorrow, maybe a few more clouds, and then we get into Saturday and Sunday and we'll have a better chance for a few showers and thunderstorms around here. Same situation into Monday, maybe a lesser chance for some rain, but still you can't rule out one or two of them. Even on St. Paddy's Day on Tuesday, and then Wednesday, it's again still a couple of showers and thunderstorms and remaining very mild. All right, thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. 618, 67 degrees. Next on GMSA, what Apple is doing to help out those with the coronavirus outbreak in China. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. I'm your 70 pound St. Bernard puppy, and my lack of impulse control is about to become your problem. Oh, no, come on, I saw you eating poop earlier. Hey! My focus is on the road, and that's saving me cash with DriveWise. Who's the dummy now? Forget Allstate. We're good drivers, save 40% for avoiding mayhem, like me. Sorry! He's a baby! Whether you were born for more dance-offs, more travels, or more touchdowns, get the immune support that gives you more. Airborne's Crafted Blend has vitamins, minerals, and herbs. And no gummy has more vitamin C. Airborne. We are AARP. For over 60 years, we've empowered people to choose how they live as they age. We advocate for health and financial security. We strengthen communities everywhere. AARP. Real possibilities. In this morning's GMA First Look, words of warning from those living in Italy. Things are changing um, dramatically from one day to the next. And um, now I'm starting to have friends who are getting sick and their parents are getting sick. And so it's starting to get um, very, very personal. Christina Higgins, an American mother, describing what it's like in Italy in a Facebook post now going viral. Now telling her friends and family back home to not take this virus lightly. Make it very clear to them that this is coming and this is already in the United States. 
you're only weeks behind us and you, you need to know that. <laughs> so um, you need to, t- people need to take action now. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more from Italy, plus coast-to-coast coverage of the virus's spread here in America. Plus, George Stephanopoulos goes one-on-one with Vice President Mike Pence. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Welcome back. 623 right now, and it's time for another look at best of behind the kitchen door. Perfect restaurant scores from around the Alamo City within the last 30 days. You know, every week I I make the offer. Hey, if you got a perfect score, let us know about it. I'm surprised more establishments don't take us up on that, but one did, and it is Ruthie's Mexican Restaurant. Congratulations. They submitted their perfect score uh, recently, again, within the last 30 days. Uh, 11,423 West Avenue. Congratulations and thanks for sending in that perfect score. We found some more. This is Chipotle 8227 Highway 151. Also received a a perfect score. Firewalk 11,000 block of I-10 West aced their inspection as well. Also coming up, Aces IHOP 10,000 block of Culebra. And then finally, we've got Taco Cabana in the 15,000 block of Chase Hill Boulevard out there, right off of 1604, very close to the UTSA main campus. Okay, so here's another shot. Send me an email, bkd at ksat.com for your perfect score, and we'll try to get it on the air right here on GMSA every Thursday morning. Les? Thank you very much. Well, a consumer advocacy group looked into prices on items like masks and hand sanitizers and found that price hikes by third-party sellers and Amazon itself were out there. One example, mask prices, 166% higher than before the crisis. Amazon says it's restricting sales of some virus-related products due to price gouging. Several big tech companies took part in a White House teleconference about the virus. It reportedly ran about two hours and it included discussions about stopping the spread of the virus, conspiracy theories on social media as well. And Apple is increasing its iPad production in China because of the high demand among Chinese parents who want to help their children learn while their schools are closed because of the virus. Right now, it's just about 625, 67 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, important news for moms. We have tips that could make your life a little bit easier. And the NBA suspending games. We're talking all games until further notice. Next half hour, we have an official statement from the National Basketball Association. Checking the roadways as we head to break. We'll get an update on your morning commute. Stay with us. Coming up, a country in crisis. How leaders and lawmakers are dealing with the global pandemic that is coronavirus. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington with the latest. Here at home, waking up to uh, considerably less fog, at least in this shot here, looking towards the Alamo Dome of the downtown San Antonio, including the Tower of the Americas on your early Thursday morning. And if you're just now waking up, rise and shine. It is Thursday, March 12th. Hopefully it's a smooth commute as we approach the end of the work week. It, it's very smooth right now. Things are looking good out there. One accident, that's all I'm working with right now. How's the tail end of spring break looking this year? Uh, very warm, very humid. Did have some sunshine yesterday, so a lot of folks were out to enjoying that. And that's going to be about the same situation today. Temperatures, though, will still be way above normal. And then as we mm-hmm. get to the very end of it the last weekend, there are some rain chances. It was so, downright hot yesterday. 86 degrees. Unbelievable. Yeah, normal high is in the low 70s right now, so we're way above normal. Take a look outside, and your visibility is good. We don't have any fog showing up. Uh, there's a couple of spots, reduced visibility over there to the west around Castroville, Hondo, but no big deal. Nothing that we were talking about compared to uh, yesterday when we had all that thick fog. Temperatures overall, especially in the hill country, are up about three, four degrees approximately compared to yesterday. We're at 67 in town, 66 Port of Stinson, Randolph, and there's a lot of humidity out there. Dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere, are across the board up a little bit compared to yesterday, and that's along with that cloud cover. It's helping to keep temperatures up. Oak, yeah, you may start feeling that now because we're getting into the heart of the oak season with all the leaves falling and all those little catkins, as they call them, those little dingly things uh, hanging around here. Molds on the moderate side, same thing with the hackberry. And cloudy, warm, humid. Uh, maybe in a low-lying area, a patch of fog as the morning rolls on. And then partly cloudy, low 80s today, so still way above normal. Then tomorrow, more clouds. It's still a, a warm day, a lot like today. And then tomorrow night into Saturday is when we have the chance for some rain. Saturday and Sunday, a couple of showers, a few thunderstorms around the area. And uh, 
staying on the warm side, and that's going to be the case in the first part of next week as well. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, after a kind of a rocky start. Well, what's going on now? I just see that one. Well, that's the East Summit accident I had oh, earlier. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you were after we had that major accident on 281 North. And uh, once that got cleared up, it got quiet for me. So yeah, yeah for, that's quiet for you too. So yeah, other than this one accident right here, it's 240 East Summit Avenue. It's a one vehicle accident. Supposedly the vehicle hit a tree. Looks like SAPD is still working on that, but it's not affecting the major highways. Have a little bit of moderate traffic there in those southbound lanes of 281. But other than that, nothing too bad to worry about. All right, here we go. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 90, 10 minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes. So just good times all around. Things are looking really good out there. Let's look at the roadways. 35 and Evans is good. 35 and 410 still looking very good. Traffic's going to pick up. Not as bad though because of spring break. And 37 to Jones on the southeast side. Everything looking good. Well, hope you're having a great day. And uh, Mark Leslie, back to you. Nick, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you. 631 new this morning. Bear County Sheriff's investigators are trying to figure out more about a deadly shooting. It happened late last night in far west Bear County at a home not far from Alamo Ranch Parkway and Loop 1604. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. So Katrina, what do we know about the person who was killed? Well, I checked with the medical examiner's office just a little while ago. They are still working to make a positive identification. So there's no name or exact age just yet, but they do tell me that the victim in this case is a teenage boy. The deputies responded to a 911 call around 9 o'clock last night and found that shooting victim at a home in the 11,500 block of Sangria. That teenage boy was already dead. They have not released any information on how he was shot, but they did tell us that they detained a man at that location in connection with the shooting. Now, this is a, a developing story. It's continuing to unfold, and we do hope to get more information on this a little bit later today. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Thousands more cases of coronavirus sprouting and spreading across the globe here in the U.S. Communities canceling events, taking unprecedented levels of precaution. The president addressed the nation last night, doubling down on travel restrictions and working with lawmakers to provide desperate medical relief and financial aid. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest on the efforts out of Washington. A country in crisis. I have decided to take several strong but necessary actions to protect the health and well-being of all Americans. Here in the U.S. and around the world, coronavirus now a global pandemic, the first in a decade, according to the World Health Organization. The death toll at home and abroad rising. Plus, President Trump addressing the nation, instituting more sweeping travel restrictions. Flights from Europe to the United States banned for the next 30 days with few exceptions. Anything coming from Europe to the United States is what we are discussing. As more Americans in desperate need of COVID-19 testing and supplies, Trump announcing insurance companies will waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments. The White House also promising to take emergency action to give workers financial relief, including deferring tax payments for people and businesses. He also called on Congress to offer a payroll tax cut. This as a new warning from top health officials on the speed of the spread. Means it is 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. I think that's something that people can get their arms around and understand. And now the State Department advising all U.S. citizens to reconsider all travel abroad. And as for President Trump's payroll tax proposal, that has strong opposition from both parties on Capitol Hill. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Well, in terms of economic relief, the president has been pushing Congress for a payroll tax cut, but Democrats, even Republicans, have expressed some opposition. The National Basketball Association has suspended its season until further notice after a player tested positive for coronavirus. Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz is the first player to test positive for the virus. The league has shut down for the foreseeable future, which could cost teams, including our San Antonio Spurs, hundreds of millions of dollars. The NBA released a statement saying that any team that played the Jazz within the last 11 days must self-quarantine. The Spurs are not, not one of the teams which must participate in the self-quarantine. Our Spurs last played the Jazz February 21st. And here's what Mavericks owner Mark Cuban had to say about this big league announcement. This is crazy, this can't be true. I mean, it's not, 
within the realm of possibilities. It's just it seemed more like out of a movie than reality. It's really not about basketball or money. I mean, literally, if if this thing is just exploding to the point where you know all of a sudden players and others have had it, you think about your family. You know, you want to really make sure you're doing this the right way. You know, because now it, it's it's much more personal, and you've seen what's happened in other countries. But just the whole idea that it's come this close and potentially a couple players have it. Um, just stunning isn't the right word. Well, here's part of the official statement from the NBA. The NBA is suspending gameplay following the conclusion of tonight's schedule of games until further notice. The NBA will use this hiatus to determine next steps for moving forward in regards to the coronavirus pandemic. If you want to be informed about the coronavirus outbreak, KSAT.com is filled with news, resources, and more importantly, we have updates about things like uh, university closures and different events. We've dedicated a tab at the top of our website to all things coronavirus. Just click on the tab and it'll take you to everything you need to know, including those canceled events, changes at universities, restrictions on travel, and the cases right here in the Lone Star State. There is other news this morning. Disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein has been sentenced to 23 years in prison. He was sentenced yesterday after breaking his courtroom silence for the first time with a rambling plea for mercy, in which he said to be totally confused by the Me Too movement. He faced five to 29 years in jail and after last month's convictions for first degree criminal sexual acts and third degree rape. Well, Tennessee investigators confirm remains found in an outbuilding last week are 15 month old Evelyn Boswell. Authorities did not say how the toddler died. Evelyn was last seen in December, but she wasn't reported missing until February, which is when the Amber Alert was issued. So far, no one has been charged in her death, but her mother and her grandmother have been arrested. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation says the case is still open. Invitations to participate in the 2020 census will be sent out today for those living in Bear County. You will have until May to take part. You can respond online, by phone, by mail. And then in May, the volunteers will start knocking on doors to make sure everyone's counted. It helps determine how much funding states get and where all the money goes. The Bureau says children need to be counted as well. Right now on our website, everything you need to know about the census. From questions about it to important facts to know, all the information available, ksat.com. Go to the homepage, click on census under our news tab. And with the state seeking the death penalty for accused cop killer Otis McCain, jury selection, which is now underway, becomes more complex. McCain accused in the execution style shooting of veteran SAPD de detective Benjamin Marconi. Our Paul Veneman takes a look at how jury selection is conducted in death penalty cases. Both prosecutors and defense attorneys are in the process of reviewing questionnaires completed by 200 potential jurors in the capital murder case of Otis McCain. The next step, the lawyers and McCain will meet here with individual prospective jurors to review their questionnaire. They give you an insight into the thoughts uh, and views of the panel members before they come to court. The stakes here are as high as they get since prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. McCain is accused of shooting veteran SAPD detective Ben Marconi to death as Marconi sat in his patrol car. Both the state and the defense team have identical definitions of what they're looking for in a juror. So someone that can be open-minded, that can really be open-minded and doesn't have extreme views on either end. Their job as a juror could be complex. If they convict McCain, they'll have to consider two special issues. The special issues are very technical and you really, really have to explain it to them. Those issues are, is the defendant a future danger to society? And are there any mitigating circumstances that dictate that the death penalty not be enforced? If the answer to each question is no, the sentence is execution. If one question is answered yes, it's life in prison without the possibility of parole. Interviewing prospective jurors, which normally takes about a day or two in most cases, is expected to last at least a month. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to be done before a jury takes their place here. At this point, it looks like that'll happen on the 27th of next month. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. It's about 640, 67 degrees. If you have little ones running around at home, when they keep it right here after the break, tips every mom needs to know. Well, all 
the week, we have been sharing fun activities and snacks your kids can enjoy if you're hanging out at home this spring break. The tips and tricks come from some local moms. We also talked to them about motherhood. Here's some of their advice for every mom. Where is your spot at this table? E-Y-T-O-N. Sit down. Motherhood is a series of compromises, yeah. for sure, and a lot of giving up of visions you had, and there's a lot of beautiful things that you didn't know were coming. I make my hat. Okay, draw your hat, that's great. Draw. I can make my, in my hat, in my hat. There's gonna be a lot of things that you thought were gonna be a certain way, and they're just not. <laughs> yeah. Red is my favorite color. Can you stick that on the line? Let go of the expectations other people have for you and just be comfortable where you are. You don't see other moms necessarily feeling overwhelmed that often, so you don't know <laughs> yourself that that's a thing until you're in it. <laughs> Here it is. Our goal was to encourage moms that they can have a simple and a healthy life at the same time. Can you make a triangle? Circle. A triangle? Yeah. Can you make a triangle? How? Two lines. That's good. And back. Oh. Yeah. Finding a community where you can commiserate together and talk about these things and not feel so alone. I didn't realize that would be so important yeah. in motherhood. Right now we're at 645, 67 degrees. Let's check on your traffic. What's going on on the roadways? Not much right now. Uh, major highways are looking really good. Hardly any accidents out there. Some accidents on small streets, but on your major roadways, things are looking great. Look at these drive times. You're 10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, 12 minutes. And if you're the 10 uh, eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. Usually those are like 20 to 22 at this time, but things are looking good right now out there in the city. All right, 10 and 1604 on the northwest side. Traffic coming at you good. 1604 in Calabria. That Alamo, that 151 flaw, we're getting a little backed up there. We have 35 in Ben's Engelman. That normal traffic of the ramp right there to Samsey. Uh, 35 and 37. Light to moderate traffic. And uh, 35 at Evans. South and northbound lanes looking light to moderate, but nonetheless looking smooth. All right. That is looking smooth. Thank you, Nick. Speaking of moms, there's a couple of local moms mm -hmm. that are going to be on Shark Tank tomorrow night. Tell them about the invention. I love it. They were on uh, SA Live yesterday, and they call themselves the uh, Space Travelers. Okay. And they did their presentation in, like, mock space suits to get the... But it all started when they had the kids in the back seat going on a road trip. Mm -hmm. And as kids always do, it's like, you're touching me. Don't mm -hmm. fight, 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 fight. Argue, argue, argue. Oh, and they came up with their little individual... Cubicles-like. Cubicles. -like. And see what they're made out of, and, and everything. It's, it's fascinating. And uh, they said when they when they did, I said, "Did you meet the sharks before?" And they go, like, "Nope." You, that's the very first what you, time. What you see on television is the real wow. deal. That's okay. the moment they go out there, and they've got you know literally just a couple of minutes, basically. To make no pressure. Did they get anybody to bite on it? They won't tell you. They wouldn't tell us. Oh, oh. you don't watch the show. Oh. Well, I'll so record it, so I'll I'm, be watching it. That means you have to watch Shark Tank right here on, on ABC. KSI 12. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Squirrel. 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 What the, what's it with the expression on his face? I what? Mean, it looks like it's going well. Well. Yeah. So what's the forecast, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect, Connect picture, even though it is of a squirrel as they chew up your patio furniture. Anyway, uh, with lots of clouds this morning. Uh, good visibility, though. We don't have any mist or anything to, to uh, deal with as of right now. 63, Helotus, Bernie, 67 at uh, the airport and mid-60s in the hill country. A lot of humidity as well, and just get used to it because what we have right now is going to be sticking around basically throughout the weekend and even into the first part of next week. Wind is out of the south to southeast. That's what's pulling in all the humidity here at the surface. And we do have um, kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today, sort of like yesterday. We will make it up into the low 80s. Once again, we're going to be about 10 degrees above normal. Then the clouds come back in again overnight, of course, and we'll see a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow. I think maybe a few more clouds hanging around. Once we get into tomorrow night and Saturday, that's when, as you can see on this model, it uh, starts to form up a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms far northwest of the hill country. But then that better chance of rain in those um, somewhat stronger disturbances, if you will, will start to work their way across the area 
So that's why our better chance of rain is going to be coming on in here by Saturday as well as on Sunday. Now, as far as the humidity, these dew points, you know, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere are going to be staying well up into the 60s and even mid 60s all the way through again the middle of next week. But at least by the weekend, with that higher humidity, we're going to have something to kind of squeeze out some rain. So rain chances right now are still looking fairly decent for the weekend. Here's the uh, the culprit controlling our weather. We've got this upper low out here to the west of us. That's pulling in all the moisture. And then eventually, even though this sort of breaks a little bit, there'll be enough energy which is going to slide across here. And that's what's going to give us that chance for the better chance for some rain by the weekend. So today we're going to make it up into the mid 70s, already above the normal high temperature at noon with mostly cloudy skies and then sunshine thrown in later on today. 82 for a high temperature tomorrow. Roughly the same situation. Start off a lot of clouds, some sunshine in the afternoon up to 80. Low temperatures stay in the mid 60s all the way through the weekend. High temperatures stay basically 80 through the weekend. And the first part of the week, the better chance of rain is going to be uh, on Saturday as well as Sunday. And then still a couple of showers. We really won't see an overall change in this pattern even in the middle of next week. And so that's why temperatures don't change and the conditions don't change. We'll still have a couple of showers and thunderstorms around here even in through Wednesday of next week. Okay. I think my yard could use some rain. Me too. Thanks. But Tintill on your Thursday morning, 67 degrees. Are you always running late? Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we learn what mistakes we're all making and get some tips about what you can do to be on time. That's tomorrow, GMSA. Back outside with live cam on your Friday Eve. Looking here in the downtown area, we're, we're just off camera here and we're waving right now. You just can't see us. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have full team coverage of the latest developments in the coronavirus emergency. Now officially a pandemic, President Trump addressing the nation from the Oval Office last night, announcing new measures to help stop the spread of the virus here and also proposals to help workers. While more cities and states are reacting to the outbreak, limiting large gatherings, closing schools. The big question this morning, will our hospitals and the medical staff be able to handle a massive jump in cases? Vice President Pence will join us this morning right here on GMA. A teenager's life has ended with gunfire and now the investigation into his death is just beginning. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That case is being handled by the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Deputies answered a 911 call around 9 o'clock last night at a home in the 11,500 block of Sangria in far west Bear County. That's where they found the teenage boy dead from a gunshot wound. Investigators have not revealed anything about how it happened, but they did say that they had taken a man into custody at the scene. The medical examiner's office is still trying to make a positive identification on that teenager, so we don't have a name or exact age just yet. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, our spring break fun continues. If you're hitting the road anytime soon, you want to be sure to tune in because we have simple snack ideas for your kids on the go. You won't want to miss the creative ideas at 9 after Good Morning America. You also don't want to miss your morning commute. Let's find out if there are any problems. Yeah, just one accident right now. It's going to be at the intersection of Judson Road and Nacogdoches Road. Looks like one SAPD unit's on scene, determining whether those vehicles are drivable or not. Here, hopefully, around uh, 730 in that cut, and I'll get y'all some more information on that accident. Taking a look outside, 35 and 410. Man, everything's just looking smooth right now. Spring break has it great. Uh, the spring break has the roadways great right now, so enjoy it while it lasts. Better this morning than what it was yesterday. We don't have uh, near the fog. As a matter of fact, there's just a couple little spots, maybe some low lying areas out toward the hill country. Uh, still very warm and humid, though. Everybody's in the mid to upper 60s. We're about 15 or so degrees above normal, and we are going to see some sunshine later on this afternoon. 74 at noon, already above the normal high temperature at noon. And then we top off at 82. Temperatures really aren't going to be changing all that much through the weekend and into next week. We do have some better chances for some rain by Saturday and Sunday, a couple of showers and thunderstorms, and even into the first part of next week because the overall weather pattern is not going to change all that much. Wow. Spring break's almost over. Enjoy mm -hmm. the next few days you have off, everybody. Thanks for starting your day with us here on Good Morning San Antonio. Our friends at Good Morning America are coming up next in New York. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.